Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. Yesterday, hundreds of demonstrators gathered on the campus of St. Louis University to protest Israel's military attacks on Gaza. STLPR politics correspondent Jason Rosenbaum was there, and he joins us now with some takeaways. Jason, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me. So, what happened? (laughs) Well... It's hard to look at this demonstration without talking about it in context with what happened on Saturday at Washington University. And just for full disclosure, I'm an adjunct instructor at Washington University. My wife works there. I've tried to stay away from stories that put Washington University in controversy. But Mm -hmm. since this was at St. Louis University, poof, no conflicts anymore. (laughs) But after what happened on on Saturday, I think that there was a desire to continue the protests against Israel's military attacks on Gaza at, at SLU because I, I think that there there had been rallies and, and protests over the over this conflict over the last few months, but they're now getting a lot of attention because of what's happening across the country on college campuses. And what I would describe what happened is uh, hundreds of people gathered, they chanted, they marched. They sat in the middle of a street on Grand. Um, They banged drums. They talked with each other. They marched some more. And then they came back and and left because it started to rain. Um, I didn't really get a sense that, like, there were police officers there, but uh, their presence was very light. That's the best way I could put it. And it went off without incident. Mm -hmm. No. Who was at this protest, Jason, and what were the demands you were making? So a lot of the people were SLU students, um, but uh, there were also, uh, including SLU PhD student Alem, uh, Ahlem Jabir, uh, and she, she said that students like her should have the power to decide who funds her university, and explaining that divestment is a tangible and winnable goal. We are paying to go to this university and we do not want our money, our time, our energy, our blood, sweat and tears being profited on by those that would occupy us, that would oppress us, that would kill us, that would bomb us and genocide us. We don't want that, especially at a Jesuit university. That's the thing. You know, our values at a Jesuit university have to align with who we have supporting our Jesuit university, financially or not. And Boeing is a murderous corporation. So is that is that what Jesuits are then? And so like, what she was talking about is one of the demands is they want SLU to cut ties with Boeing because they see Boeing as a tangible contributor to what Israel is doing in Gaza. It's similar to what you're seeing across the country. And I think that was a demand of the students at Washington University as well. Mm -hmm. Now, we had talked earlier this week with STLPR staff photojournalist Eric Lee about the Wash U protest, the the anti-war protest. In other ways, I mean, how did the SLU campus protest compare I think that the biggest comparison that I can make, and I just want to make clear, I wasn't at the WashU protest, so I can only go by what people like Eric Lee and other reporters that were there said. But even though I don't know if like SLU was overjoyed it was happening, there have been protests about other things at SLU, including this topic Mm -hmm. in the recent past. And I think that generally the uh, mentality of SLU is just, to let it happen under certain guidelines. Like, obviously, if somebody threw a brick through a window, that's not going to stand. Obviously, if somebody starts, like, fighting each other, that's not going to stand. But I think that the administrators are used to students being very boisterous about their beliefs and even times when the speech may seem uncomfortable. And I guess to see how it compares, uh, Andrew De La... De La Salas is a WashU student who was arrested on Saturday, mm. and he told STL producer producer Ala Kaziz 
that he came to the protest to show his solidarity with SLU students. I also wanted to come out because I know Alderwoman Green and some other city officials were really trying to emphasize that this was an opportunity to show us what democracy, what peaceful protest can actually look like, not sending in five different police departments, some of which have documented white supremacists on them, and having administrators sit behind the police lines and not negotiate. This is what peaceful protest can look like. This is a better reflection of those values. And while hopefully these institutions still can still divest, I, was, I felt actually supported here. So you, you did not feel intimidated to come back here, despite what had happened to you? I. I was afraid at first when I started to see some officers and when I heard about the potential repercussions, um, but I feel much more confident being here once I stepped onto campus and I saw that the first thing we saw was people holding signs and little kids running around instead of cops shoving bikes in our faces. And I, I, that was my general impression as well. Um, I, I, and what's really interesting to me is Alla actually sent me a, a email from like the top Jesuit person in the world. And I'll forgive me, I am not well versed on Jesuit hierarchy, mm -hmm. but it seems to me, and this is kind of in line with like the Pope, for example, that the Catholic Church has taken a pretty public stand calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Mm -hmm. um, and while the president of SLU hasn't, and that's one of the demands of the protesters, it just seems like the protests and, and the message is kind of in line with what the Catholic Church and the Jesuits Jesuits are, are feeling. So I feel like maybe that plays a role in not being as hard-edged as WashU was. Mm -hmm. now, what kinds of conversations were you hearing uh, happening among the protesters? So I was talking with some people kind of about the, the war in Gaza, but I also was talking with them kind of offhandedly about the uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, because I am half Ukrainian and half Polish. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested in that topic. Um, and I'm also Jewish. So I can't say that I'm like not paying attention to what's happening uh, in, in in Gaza or Israel. Right. But I think that like there's no silver linings to what's happened over the last seven months. What's going on in what happened on October 7th and what's happening in Gaza is just a, a, a never-ending parade of horrible imagery and 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 not only imagery, but horrible things happening to our fellow humans. Mm -hmm. And I think just being able to talk about these types of things openly, even if like we ha come from different perspectives, has been the one thing that I think has been positive throughout my experience in covering this, because I've learned a lot. Uh, about Israel and Palestine that I didn't know before this be got a lot of attention. Yeah. And not only does I think it makes me like more informed as a reporter, but more informed as a human being. And I think that based off these conversations I had, just as another point I want to make, I think if we all were talking to, uh, to each other about this in person and we're not volleying back and forth online, mm. I think we'd be a lot better off. I don't think we'd solve the problems that have been around for, you know, 100 plus years. But I do think that face to face conversations, even about difficult issues where we may have disagreements, is the way to go mm -hmm. over Twitter or Instagram. Yeah. And just as a final question here, the SLU president, Fred Pastello, he sent an email ahead of the protest promising to meet peace with peace, as the university did during Occupy SLU. Uh, which was a protest that took place in uh, 2014. Jason, did you get the sense that this protest was an extension of that movement? I think it was. And I do recall very vividly after Michael Brown's death in 2014 that there was a gathering on SLU's campus. And I think it was met not with tear gas and not with police presence, but with conversation, like I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, Again, I'm trying to hold my tongue about what I think about WashU because of my ties there. But it does seem if you're in a situation where there is no vandalism, there is no obvious violence, and it's just people wanting to express an opinion in, in a somewhat unconventional way, maybe what happened last night in SLU is the way for administrators and law enforcement to deal with it.
This episode was produced by Ella Kuziz. Audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.